The men in white are from the condemned section of Luzira Maximum Security Prison in Kampala, Uganda. They've been sentenced to death for crimes such as murder, armed robbery and treason. This choir of condemned inmates is trying to publicise their fight against the death penalty. They're singing for their lives. In the first case of its kind anywhere in the world, a coalition of all the inmates on death row is engaged in a long-running legal battle with the government. They say the death penalty is unconstitutional and should be abolished. Alexander McLean is a 22-year-old law graduate from London and the founder of the African Prisons Project. Over the past four years, he spent much of his time working in African prisons. At the medium security jail, he's helping to organise the renovation of the prison hospital. He's also arranged for the death row choir to record an album of their songs. I think all inmates use a song and music as a as a way of sharing their their concerns and their problems with the outside world. Um, indeed, they don't get very many other opportunities of doing so. Um, and all prisoners face problems, but I think in con the condemned section, when the problem you face is, is possibly losing your life, um, it really focuses their minds. And the songs that they, they sing are very touching, um, and clearly a great deal of thought has gone into them, um, so they really have a, a, a strong impact on the listener. Sing a song of freedom Prisoners and human rights groups estimate that as many as 30 to 40 percent of the inmates are innocent of the crimes for which they have been convicted. Inmates complain about not having received proper representation at their trials and the judicial system is far from perfect. One man spent 18 and a half years on death row before being given a presidential pardon when his so-called murder victim was found to be alive and well. The prisoner's name was Edward Mpaji. He now campaigns against the death penalty on Ugandan radio. The distress you face when you don't know when to die, waiting to die, and when it comes in tonight you say, hey, really I have survived today, but tomorrow. Sometimes it brings even the ulcers in the stomach, you go for directing because of the fear. If not, if you have the strength of God to give you strength, to, you can't overcome it. That the, the big problem I faced when I was in condemn, and that's what they face. There are so many people on death row who are innocent. All those who committed it, but felt sorry. All those there was a cause of committing that crime. They are there. There have been no civilian executions on death row since 1999, when 28 men were hung at the gallows in a single day. Later this year, the Supreme Court will make a final decision on the abolition of the death penalty. They must decide not just whether the death penalty is cruel, inhuman and degrading, and therefore against the Ugandan constitution, but also whether the mandatory death sentence should be scrapped. Right now, the law as it is in Uganda is that if you commit any one of the following four offences, murder, armed robbery, armed smuggling, and certain types of treason, the only sentence that a judge can give you is the death sentence. In fact, the judges, when they issue the sentences, usually say, my hands are tied. So, for instance, if I pull out a pen knife now, and I told you, hand me your cell phone, and the judge finds you were armed, you had a pen knife, you robbed him, you took his cell phone. Once he finds me guilty of that, the only punishment he can give me is a death sentence. In the same way, if he found a serial killer who had killed 500 people, he would give him the same sentence as me. There are about 550 men and women sentenced to death in Uganda. The choir sings that they can still be useful members of society. 
the prison service agrees, and the Commissioner General is one of the death penalty's most outspoken critics. As you know, it's out of fashion all over the world to execute people. I think this is something which is going out of fashion. Personally, or departmentally, as a department, we, we don't believe in the death penalty because we think uh, it's not our mandate to take life. Life can only be taken by God. And, uh, because of our inefficient systems, you cannot be sure that you are not going to execute uh, the wrong people. Eh? Our systems are still very rudimentary. And, uh, let, let people be sentenced to life, real life. Because the person who kills another deserves not to be in a society. But does he deserve to die? I don't know. That is another question. But for us, we don't believe in that. Although we have the, uh, we are the department mandated to carry out uh, executions uh, by hanging. We have the scaffolds. We have the executioners. They are all functions. But uh, we, we, we don't agree with that. And that's our stand. You think your friend has gone if they have killed him? What about me? Your last chance, maybe you made you wrote your petition to the president. You don't know what criteria they, they will use. Differently, you get scared and you are distressed. It can be, change your senses and you become mad. And some are being in, in our lunatic. They have some, some they have changed, they, they don't, they are, not, they are no longer normal. No. Uh, gains without pains. Attempts are people... The inmates on death row started their own school, where they are both the pupils and the teachers. Many prisoners are illiterate when they arrive, but in this small room they can learn to read and write and continue their studies all the way up to A-level. They even sit public exams. It's a rehabilitation program that the prison service encourages. Of the directory government. So we believe they, are, they should be here and they should be rehabilitated. They should be well equipped, given the necessary skills, so that when they go outside, they can be beneficial to not only their families, but to the society as a whole. And with education, uh, besides the equipping them with the necessary uh, skills, it helps them. Uh, become more disciplined. It's very easy to uh, to tame a, a literate person than an illiterate one. I was not allowed to film inside the cells of the condemned section or to interview current death row inmates on camera, but this man, sentenced to death for murder, wanted to be heard. Now, the problem in our country here is just because of uh, Maybe sometimes it's somebody uh, because of poverty, because of corruption in the government. So you see, this is why people who in the, in the, in the condemned section. Here we are different types of people. men, are there. Any kind of thing. Or else we say, no, wait. Because we cannot die like that. The death row inmates are locked down from four in the afternoon until eight in the morning. During the day they can play chess or volleyball go to school or watch television. But at night they are confined, sometimes six men to a cell, sleeping on bedding rolled out on the floor. A small window high up in the wall provides little light or ventilation. And with the gallows just on the other side of the prison wall, the thought of death is never far away. Some prisoners complain of being beaten by the guards and the use of isolation cells, although the prison authority says it's working to promote better rights for the inmates. Many of those who have survived the system also want to ensure those rights. 
Robert Mugisha had his death sentence commuted to life in prison and is due for release later this year. During my stay in prison here, I, I decided to continue with studies. And uh, this year I've sat for my A-level exams. I wish if the results come in my favor, I wish to, to pursue law, 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 law at the higher institution. Whereby, in case I finish, I become a lawyer. I, my, my aim task I'm foreseeing is that I, I will be able to advocate for, my, for the rights of the prisoners, and especially those who have been prisoners who are denied of good justice. I will see that at least their rights are preserved. Susan Kagula, nearest the camera, is one of about 30 women who have been condemned to death. She spent more than five years on death row, accused of murdering her husband. It's a crime she vigorously denies. Hers is the lead case against the death penalty, and she speaks and sings on behalf of the condemned. We are crying to the authorities, our leaders in Uganda. President Museven, our father pardon us. We assure you we've changed so much. We are good citizens of Uganda. Given another chance to live, you won't regret. I think hope is, is important for all of us and for anyone in prison. Your hope is set on the, the day when you, you get out. Um, but for those guys who've been sentenced to death, um, if you gave up hope, I don't know how you, you'd go on living in such close proximity to the gallows and in such, such miserable surroundings. Um, yeah, I'm sure up until the very last minute, people hope that, that they'll, they'll either get their case uh, quashed at the Court of Appeal or they'll get a presidential pardon. Um, no, but hope is something I think anyone who visits um, the condemned section will, will find in abundance. That person should be forgiven and given another punishment because that is not a punishment. This is not a punishment. If you, they kill him, what, what will you gain? But if he suffers, eh, if he's punished in prison to work, like in Uganda here, you go and work for 20 years, working for nothing. Eh? Don't think it is not an easy thing. Therefore, I should appeal to people that they should learn to forgive. And if you forgive, you have peace. It's true we have accepted that we made a mistake. We plead for your forgiveness in repentance. Death venerita should be abolished. We won't do it again, we are broken. Do not give us, we are so sorry.